Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for, uh, for coming. I'm Harry Harding. I'm the dean of the Frank Batten School of Leadership and Public Policy here at the University of Virginia. And it's my pleasure to welcome all of you to the celebration of the publication of a new book by Jerry Warburg called Dispatches from the Eastern Front, a political education from the Nixon years to the age of Obama. Jerry Warburg is the Assistant Dean for External Affairs at the Batten School and is also a senior member of what we call our practitioner faculty. And in fact, Jerry is an exemplar of why professional schools, including professional schools of public policy, need practitioner faculty, practitioner faculty with knowledge of the academy, just as they need first-rate academic scholars uh, who are deeply engaged in the profession uh, that they are teaching. Jerry brings to this position very extensive experience uh, in the world of public policy. He has served as a staff member on Capitol Hill in the Senate for many years. He was also a very senior uh, leader uh, in one of the most prominent lobbying firms uh, in Washington. So he knows what he teaches to his students. In addition, not only does he bring that rich experience in the world of Washington, but he also has rigorous academic training, a graduate degree in political science from Stanford that enables him to not simply tell anecdotes and war stories, as interesting and illustrative as they are, but to put these into a clear, rigorous, analytical framework uh, for his uh, students. He is a very highly effective teacher. Uh, he uh, has been named by the students in the Batten School as the uh, commencement speaker a year or so back. He's been nominated for a number of teaching awards at the university, and his courses, both graduate and undergraduate, his course on Congress 101 for graduate students and a newer course called Policy Challenges of the 21st Century for undergraduates have gotten rave reviews from the students. But it's not just his ability to lead a class or to give a great lecture. It is his deep willingness to engage regularly one-on-one -on -one as a mentor of students, very much in the tradition that Thomas Jefferson tried to create when he founded the University of Virginia. Now, in addition to his role as a very effective scholar uh, and uh, teacher, uh, Jerry is also a prolific writer. Uh, he has written in virtually every genre. He's written a novel. He has uh, written scholarly articles and chapters. Uh, he has written uh, op-eds. Uh, and now he is uh, the proud author, and we proud with him, of a memoir on his life in Washington. So as dean of the Batten School, it is enormously gratifying for me to introduce a, an honored member of our faculty, a distinguished author, and a very prescient uh, observer of the Washington scene, Jerry Warburg. Jerry? Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us. So what drove the creation of this very quirky book, and what insights might you gain by reading it? Who became the heroes and villains for the baby boomers uh, and a career like mine in politics? I'll try to shed some light on these questions in my opening comments, and I look forward to your questions at the conclusion. First of all, I want to say a special thanks to my friend Harry Harding and to my colleagues from the Batten School of Leadership and Public Policy here at the University of Virginia. This fine school has grown under Harry's personal leadership from just three faculty members in a temporary facility on, hop, on Hospital Drive to over 250 students in one of the country's best public policy schools here at what I personally believe is one of the world's great public universities. Uh, thank you, Harry, for rescuing me from the toxic swamps of Washington uh, and bringing a recovering politician here to the university. Uh, this university is also blessed with some remarkable minds and generous colleagues who've helped me improve the book. And in particular, I want to thank a magical storyteller, a National Book Award winner, my friend John Casey, who is here with us, uh, and my good friend and reader, Ben Converse. Thank you so much for uh, uh, at least saving me from a few embarrassments. Uh, and as I said, I'm very grateful for my time here at the University of Virginia. It's been a wonderful joy, and I look forward to more years to come. 
So I want to try to accomplish four things in my opening comments tonight. First, I want to try to share a few ideas about the craft of writing. We live in an age of instantaneous tweets and impermanent, unedited blogs. So why the heck would somebody write a book and why do we read them? And why would a public policy professor with a political science degree write such a candid memoir? I'll try to answer. Second, I hope to entertain you a little bit. I'm competing with the sunshine out on the lawn and family responsibilities. Um, but I'd like to read a few short passages from the book just to give you a little flavor of where I'm coming from and try, how I try to tell the story. I'll try to shed a bit of light on a very unusual approach I took in this book, blending a 20-something's heat-of-the-moment letters home to family on the West Coast to a more sober, dispassionate analysis of the politics of our time from Nixon to Obama. I'll try to explain the method to this madness, this very quirky architecture of the book. Third, I want to push back against some of the conventional wisdom that Washington is hopelessly broken. You'll hear this afternoon, as in the book, a heartfelt plea to engage in civic affairs. Indeed, if I have any agenda here tonight, it is this, to try once more to exalt the nobility of public service. Enough of the shotgun attacks on every citizen who tries to serve their community and government. Enough of the cynical vilification of the men and women who elect, we elect to represent us. And enough of the whining from folks who don't follow the news and don't vote. As I said in a recent op-ed, and a brief advertisement here, this op-ed and a number of these uh, scribblings are available on the book publisher's excellent website, Bancroft Press has put together. It's www.dispatchesmemoir.com. And as I said in this recent op-ed, the government is not some distant alien other. Particularly those of us from Northern Virginia know, it's us. It's our fellow citizens, taxpayers and voters. Now, here at the Batten School, we've had a very strong representation of legislators come through to come into the classroom to engage directly with our students, nearly a dozen over the last year. They are accessible. So engage the government. We can make it work better and be a positive force in our citizens' lives. Now, as I've suggested, this book is a little bit counterintuitive. It concedes that our politics are broken, yet I argue there's no better time to get involved in politics. It's a book about politics and reform that calls people to public service, and it's written by, I confess, an incurable optimist. Now, we baby boomers left a lot of big challenges as part of our legacy. After four decades in politics, I know in my gut that the millennials can and will save us from the toxic brew of problems that's part of our baby boomer gift to them. Fourth and finally, I'm eager today to answer your questions and to talk both about politics and about the challenge of writing. This is my Marco Rubio moment where I need water. Now, a word on why this book. Why would a political science professor write a personal memoir? The best book I've ever read about Washington is about a staff guy. It's about a staff guy's life in politics. It's written by a gentleman named Harry McPherson. He came to Washington to do good. He stayed and did well. Uh, he was a serious young man from Texas who came to work for a junior congressman named Lyndon Johnson. And McPherson in his writing is so endearingly earnest, and he writes so damn well. He tells the story of the remarkable rise and fall of Lyndon Johnson, seen from the inside, this guy from Texas State Teachers College. And with each chapter of his book, as he progresses, you see in the voice that McPherson's getting a little wiser. He's getting a little smarter. He's getting prepared for the twist of the knife, for the high highs and the low lows of politics. And it is in this, this getting of emotional intelligence, this perspective that I sought to replicate, I confess, in my own writing. I even tip my hat to Harry McPherson in his, the title. His book was entitled A Political Education, and it's a nod to his uh, outstanding writing that I, I worked that into my very wordy title of Dispatches. His book is a gem, and I commend it to you. Now, reading Harry McPherson, I saw the Washington of his years through the eyes of